Arnold Schwarzenegger. But I mean, don't call me a self-made man because uh, I'm not a self-made man. This is a perfect example here today. Imagine if I would be sitting here and there is no one in the audience. Imagine I would be sitting here and you would not be here. I mean, we would have nothing. And so this is why it is so important to recognize that we have the help of so many people and I'm a creation of so many people from my parents on to uh, my mentors to so many people that supported me in bodybuilding, so many people that made me successful in the movie business because what would we be? How can you be a movie star when no one goes to see your movies? So it's the people that have supported me continuously. And then when you think about the governorship, I mean, how did I become governor? because 5.8 million people voted for me. So this is why I say, I'm a product of all of these millions of people that have helped me from all over the world and from California and America has given me the opportunities. It's really the land of opportunity and where you can go with nothing to America and you come out like me. And so it's possible. So I just want to say, you can call me anything. You can call me the governator or you can call me the terminator. Mm -hmm. Or you can call me schnitzel or whatever you want, but just don't ever call me a self-made okay. man. So Fine. that's the bottom line. So we years old, between 15 and 18, I learned how to sell and how to communicate and all that. So I was very fortunate about that. You also learn how to sell yourself and your own body. And I want to dial back a bit to bodybuilding because you literally invented modern day bodybuilding in many ways. You have been so iconic for so many people in that respect. And you were recently interviewed for The Hollywood Reporter and you spoke about always wanting to quest for more, that this is one of your motivations. So I wanted to ask, as a former Mr. Universe, have you ever felt satisfied with your own body? No. Um, I think as soon as you're satisfied, you stop. And so to me, after I won the first Mr. Universe contest, which was, by the way, right here in London, um, at the, uh, the, I think it was called the Royal Palace, uh, where I won the Mr. Universe contest. And then I won the, you know, I was the youngest to win the title at the age of 20. And so my career actually began right here in England. Uh, I won then in 1968, the second Mr. Universe Contest, 1969, the third, and the fourth, the fifth, and so this went on. And then I won seven Mr. Olympia competitions. <laughs> As a, you know. But what I really want to know is how serious was your rivalry with Sylvester Stallone? <laughs> well, uh, first of all, we can talk about show business and about the movies. They say that you shouldn't mention, uh, you know, things like... Uh, uh, Don't mention it. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not going to mention it. <laughs> I'm just looking out for you, Schnitzel. No, no, but I mean, uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about FUBA at all. But I mean... Uh, <laughs> But the, the bottom line is, is that, uh, you know, there was a tremendous kind of a uh, competition. I'm a very competitive person and I kind of pick people in the, and then kind of turn them into my enemy. It's a, it's a stupid thing to do. I, I recognize that. But the same thing was also in show business. And so Stallone was always kind of ahead of me. And, you know, he came out with Rocky, and then I came out with Pumping Iron, and with Stay Hungry. And he grossed more than I, that my movie did. Then he did Rocky number two, and then I did Conan. 
And then all of a sudden, you know, people started talking about his body in Rocky number two, that he got more muscular. And I said, what? <laughs> you call this muscular? <laughs> And so then he came out with Rambo and he was even more ripped. And so now we started competing. I said, that was it for me. So I said to myself, okay. So I did then Commando. And, uh, and let me tell you something. I was training now as if I was training for a competition. Even though I was out of competition at this point. But I was training like I was in competition because I wanted to make sure that people see a real body rather than just a, 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 a Stallone body. And so I started kind of, so it became a competition of kind of like, who has less body fat? Who is more muscular on the screen? Who kills more people? Who makes more money at the box office? Who is using a bigger gun? So when he used the machine gun, then I got the machine gun that only is used on tanks or on, on, on helicopters. And I ran around, boom, 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 you know, and killing people. And then it came a competition, like, who kills more people on the screen? So he, I remember, he killed like 50 people, so in Commando, I had to kill 70 people. And, that's a, and then, then who killed them more viciously and more creatively? And so all, this is how the competition went on. It was insane. It got to the point where it was so competitive that uh, when we started thinking about how can we derail each other? And um, then I remember there was a comedy um, and uh, I wanted to get into comedy and so did Sly. And I felt of course, you know, that I had really the comedic talent and, <laughs> and he doesn't. So, I, we were offered the script and uh, uh, Mama Don't Shoot, I think it was called, if I'm correct. Stop on my mama. And uh, the next thing I know is, is the studio calls me and it says, do you want to do the movie? I said, well, you know, I read the script. It's a shitty script. <laughs> and... Uh, then they said, well, if you don't want to do it, then we give it to Sly because he wants to do it. So my agent found out, sure enough, he was snooping around in the project and he was interested in it. So I said, well, call them and they said that I'm really interested in it. <laughs> that now I think there's a way of changing it, that the writing, that it is acceptable and uh, I am interested in it. And so that made him really interested in it because there was competition. So we were now fighting over who gets the project, but I didn't want it. <laughs> but it was so bad, the movie, that I said to myself, if I keep saying I want to do it, then he definitely will sign on to do it. And then he would do this shitty movie. <laughs> and so this is exactly what happened. They called me back and they said, well, you know, I want to have more money. They said, well, forget it, then we're going to give it to Sly. And I said, thank God. You know? <laughs> it's a good way of kind of like, you know, make peace. Uh, if you say that he can be part of it. So I said, you know something, you're absolutely right. I think we've grown up enough, we've competed enough. Let's do that. And so Sly became partner in Planet Hollywood. And then after that, we've traveled around the world on the same plane and promoted Planet Hollywood restaurants and we became best friends. He started giving me watches, gold watches for gifts on the plane and he's a very, very generous guy. And uh, we started talking and started having a great time talking about family and he's also in, in, into painting and I'm painting and so we started, you know, talking about our painting and our artwork together. And he was into loving animals, and so was I. So we talked about that. We talked about our about our kids and about our wives and all that kind of stuff. So it was really we became wonderful friends. And today we are best of friends, and we are very supportive. No matter what I do, 
He is there and supports me. When I ran for governor, he was one of the first ones there for the fundraisers. And he was there supporting me, 100% coming up to Sacramento to visit me. And I supported him and did everything that he was doing. So this is the kind of friendship that we have now. So it is really wonderful how this whole thing came around. And now we ended up being really great, great friends. <laughs> I think that it's always very hard to come up with one person because I have been very fortunate to be directed by some of the greatest film directors and when I had a good director then the movie was successful, when I had a shitty director then the movie was not successful and uh, so I would say that Jim Cameron is uh, uh, one of my favorite directors who I have done Terminator 1, Terminator 2 and True Lies with and um, they all were very very successful movies and uh, I also would say Ivan Reitman who directed uh, you know, Twins and Kindergarten Pop yeah. and, uh, um, and you know he was extraordinary and he gave me the ability to do my first uh, comedy because in Hollywood no one was going to offer me a comedy movie um, other than the one I talked about um, <laughs> because people at that point made so much money with my movies, with the action movies that they said you're crazy that we're gonna go and now take a risk all of a sudden and have you uh, do a, a comedy. So they said, we want to continue doing action movies because that's where we make the money. And only when I met Ivan Reitman uh, at a dinner, he came up to me and he said, you know, I know you want to get into comedies. I think I could develop something for you because I've seen during the dinner conversation, I've seen things from you that I've never seen on the screen. And I think that I can really make that work. And uh, so he... ...post on got equal billing on the credits. Well, she deserves equal billing. Um, and it was one of those interesting things because I had contractually, um, you know, that I got above the title billing. So it was Schwarzenegger, True Lies. And then also starring Jamie Lee Curtis. And Jim Cameron said to me, he says, you know, she's so good in the movie would you mind to change your contract and uh, let her also be above the title? And I said, absolutely. I love Jamie Lee Curtis. She is my partner in a movie and she deserves to also be above the, 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 the title and get the credit with me uh, above the, 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 the title. And so anyway, she ended up doing Schwarzenegger, Jamie Lee Curtis in True Lies. And uh, I think she deserves it. She was a fantastic partner. <laughs> Also, um, Paul Beerhoven, who um, did uh, Total Recall with me. Yeah. And he is an extraordinary smart director, and I had a real wonderful time working with him in Mexico when we did Total Recall. It was so well, uh, you know, written. He was in charge of the ending of the movie and the whole thing, so he was wonderful to work with. Uh, and John McTurnan, who did Predator. So, uh, the, so there's several of those directors that I worked with that I thought was were really fantastic and helped my career. I would love to have an Oscar, you know, I love to win awards. <laughs> um, but that's not, you know, the reason why I do movies. And, uh, but the worst, I think, failure was my failure in my marriage. And so I regret that the most. Thank you for being so honest. And everything comes a little bit of a longer story. <laughs> but I mean, I just want you to know that none of the movie lines, we knew ahead of time that it's going to be a hit. 
None of them. Even I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I think back, and I talk about that in the book, when I think back about that Jim Cameron and I were arguing about that stupid line. I mean, I said to him, I said, I'll be back. I said, I'll, I'll, it sounds weird. I said, it's better machine-like if you say, I will be back. And he said, no, I want you to say, I'll be back. And I said, no, I want to say, I will be back. <laughs> and this is how I went back and forth until he said, look, who is the goddamn writer here? And I said, you. I said, well, then say, I'll be back. I say, I don't tell you how to act, and you don't tell me how to write. And so this is how it was resolved. And then he says, look, I give you 10 takes. Let's do 10 takes and you say 10 different ways and then we together pick the, the take that we like the best. And that's what we ended up doing. But we had no idea that this would be a repeated line. Only when the movie came out and people started coming up to me and said, you know, oh, I saw Terminator, you know, say that line, I'll be back. And I said, I'll be back. And he said, no, 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 the way you say it in the movie. The way you say it in the movie. And I said, I'll be back. <laughs> That's the reaction I got. This guy looked at me and he says, yes, yes, yes. Oh, he repeated the line and he went to his friends and says, you said the line, I'll be back. Oh, this is unbelievable. And so more and more people came up to me after the movie came out and said, can you repeat this line? And then I started repeating the line and then I started using it. I said, it, was a, it really caught on. This is a big line. And uh, I had, but we had no idea that it would be the most quoted line in movie history. I mean, it's like amazing. Of, I use it now a lot of times in my speeches or when I was campaigning and I was giving a speech and I always would say, turning to the audience, I said, remember, I'll be back. You know, and the people would be screaming and they thought they're voting for the Terminator rather than that. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't care as long as I got the vote. <laughs> I think that's how I got a lot of Democrats to vote for me. Because <laughs> they thought they voted for the Terminator. But in any case, but that backfired, by the way. That backfired because then when I became governor and uh, we had a drought and the federal government turned off the water. He said, you cannot use the water from this uh, in a reservoir because then the water goes out and the fish will get killed and blah, 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 all these excuses. And uh, a farmer came up to me and he said to me, he says, why couldn't you stop the federal government from closing this and letting that water come through and irrigate all of our fields. I said, because the federal government has a law and it is their land that, we, that this, is, this water is in, and therefore we have to ask for permission. He says, how can you say that? I voted for the Terminator. <laughs> I thought that you're gonna go up there and you break that chain and you turn that wheel and the water is gushing out and it's gonna irrigate all our fields. I'm disappointed in you, governor. I'm never gonna vote for you again. So that's what happens when the guy votes for the Terminator, right? So, you know, that guy was all confused. And so, in any case, he straightened out the mess afterwards. But in any, he was really thinking he was voting for the Terminator. And then I actually can break the chains and do all of that. And the federal government cannot do anything about that, right? So that was, was his vision. So that it can backfire, those kind of things. Most popular question. You are 76 years old now, you look decades younger, but by far the most common question from these 557 people is, what next, Arnold Schwarzenegger? What is your next goal? Well, I think that uh, I will continue doing movies. I will continue doing television shows. I will continue with promoting bodybuilding and having the Arnold Classic Bodybuilding Championships in various different continents all over the world to promote health and fitness. And uh, I will continue being involved in, in policy issues. I have the USC Schwarzenegger Institute uh, in Los Angeles, where we deal with policy issues, with healthcare issues, uh, education issues, immigration issues, homelessness issues, and so on and so forth. I will participate in all of that. I will continue fighting for a clean environment <coughs> 
fighting to get off fossil fuels and to go into renewable energy. I will be fighting for that. And so it, I just try to combine all of my talents that, and all the stuff that I've learned to make this a better world and to help other people become successful and to also be happy. To me, the happiest moment is if I can look out there and I see everyone being able to do the same things that I've done in my life, and to have a joyful life, a happy life, where you can strive for something, where you're passionate about certain things, and you're willing to struggle and to fight and all that stuff, that will make me happy. So this is why I wrote this book, to give something back to the community and to tell everyone, here's a way how you can be happier. I don't promise you to be a Mr. Olympia or anything like that, or to be a governor, or to be the Prime Minister of England or something like that, but I do promise you, when you work, when you read through this book, and you work on some of those tools that I'm recommending, that you will be better off in your life, and you will be happier, and you will be more successful. That's the bottom line. I want everybody to be successful.